So then we got L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles. And this, this big grudge that uh, happened from the fight earlier, and they ring the bell, and boom, they go back and forth. It was, it was no, you know, uh, uh, this guy shines and that guy shines. You can tell the fans are more behind L.A. Knight. But they basically go to the floor, and L.A. Knight gives A.J. the yeah heads into the desk where he runs head in the desk. People go yeah with each one. And then here comes Jimmy Uso walking out. And L.A. Knight comes around like, you want some of this? And then go turns back to A.J., and A.J. hits him with a <laughs> flying enzigiri in front of the announce desk. And when L.A. Knight goes down, he's getting up. Solo is at the railing and spikes L.A. Knight. Referee calls for the DQ. Then Solo beats up A.J. and spikes him. And then takes the microphone and says, two down, one to go. Orton, get out here right now. And right at that point, they went to the break. But that whole match and angle was like five minutes. It was like, we're going to rough each other up for three minutes, and then we're going to do this angle. So you can't, and I'm not saying that wasn't the thing to do. I'd rather see the fucking five minutes in the angle than see another WWE style match. And that's what they're counting on. You could argue and, that's the right length. I mean, when anything happened on any of the classic wrestling TV shows, other than in Memphis, which had 90 minutes to draw things out, five minutes, right? I mean, it yeah. was a segment. Or if it was some main event title match, you'd, you you might go 15 minutes when it was rare to do so for any match on television, and then you'd do your angle or whatever. But but that's a, they milked us after that opening interview segment with what was going to happen amongst all of these people for the rest of the show, and then with at, at 23 till they put L.A. and A.J. out there to do their thing and then run it directly into, minus the break, run it directly into the already advertised TV main event, because when they come back from that break, then there's Solo in the ring, and again, somebody has got a fucking concession and a carryout service, because we last left L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles, they had been Samoan spiked by this dangerous man, and they were down... In three minutes, the, they got the medical crew in there, the spatula, whatever, they've disappeared. That's the thing. I appreciate they're trying to be more, somewhat more wrestling here, and maybe baby steps, but goddamn, when would your your main event baby faces ever be laid out and hurt like that? And when they came back, you came back from the break, they've disappeared, and nothing more is. Y y am I being too picky? Well, this is the era of the disappearance. All right. So we're into Orton and Solo, and it's 12 minutes before the hour. Right? This is the advertised main event. Well, we got 12 minutes. <laughs> they get in an immediate fight. Solo takes over. They go to the floor. They run one time into the desk, one time into the stairs, and they went to the break again in one minute of action. I mean, what the fuck? So now, again, from 23 before the hour, They've had a little five-minute skirmish with L.A. Knight and A.J., and by the time they come back from one minute of action of Orton Solo, they got nine minutes on the air. Actually, it's nine minutes before the hour. SmackDown ends up two minutes early, usually, or at least a minute and a half. So they come back. They're on the floor. Orton drops Solo on the announce desk, gives him the draping DDT, and calls for the RKO. But there comes Uso down the aisle, but L.A. Knight catches him, and they get in a fight. And as Uso runs off, A.J. comes out, and Orton's watching all this, and Solo goes to grab him and turn him around and go for the spike, and Orton hits Solo with the RKO to a huge pop out of nowhere. Boom, one, two, three. There was literally less than two and a half minutes of this match on the air. And then L.A. Knight and A.J. get in the ring, and they have a three-way face-off with Orton. But out of nowhere, L.A. Knight says, fuck you, A.J., and punches him. And then Orton gives L.A. Knight the RKO and then gives one to A.J. But there's Roman in from behind and hits fucking Orton with the Superman punch, so all three babyfaces are down. 
And then Roman assault us in a condescending fashion for the, the contract. And he signs it. And he drops it at Nick Aldis's feet in a rude and vulgar manner. And then sets up to spear Orton. And as he charges to spear Orton, Orton hits the RKO out of nowhere. And, and Roman Reigns is flat of his face, colder than a banker's heart. And then Orton gets the contract and puts it in front of Roman Reigns. And we go off the air. Perfect timing. There was no match to this at all, but goddamn now everybody was, what the fuck's going to happen now? Oh, the RKO's. Oh, the RKO's. Oh, the Spears. Oh, the humanity. What can happen next? They're angling us and talking us into their biggest business. Well, money-wise ever, viewer-wise, obviously not, but that's all that the, 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 their audience wants to see, and they're giving it to them. Yeah, by not giving them too much. <laughs> and now, you know, again... Um, You're always left wanting more from the main people. I guess the only thing I yeah. worry about, and get I want to get your thoughts here, obviously it's your show. <laughs> well, thank you. Whether it's Cody Rhodes or LA Knight, do you think anyone has lost any steam because of some of the recent things like Punk coming in or The Rock returning? AJ just came back. Does it seem like everything's still okay? I mean, LA Knight's still super over, but did he kind of hit a plateau like this is where he's going to be? Or, you know, Cody is a weird, unique situation just because of the yeah. build. But what do I, you think? I think with LA Knight, it depends on what they do with him next and what he accomplishes next. AJ is going to be a heel in the sometime in the future because they're already leading us in that direction and L the people clearly like L.A. Knight better than they like A.J. at this point. But Orton is an icon who's come back after so long being away and, you know, they're really appreciating him. I don't know that it's going to cool anybody off. I think they're getting more people hot and maybe it doesn't stand out as much when, when, when some shows the only people they were really getting up for were AJ or were uh, LA Knight or the only person they were really getting up for was LA Knight at one point. Now they've got a variety of people that they're into and the ticket sales are increasing and the crowds are increasing. So it just, it doesn't stand out as, as so unique when they've got six or seven or eight guys that are getting a top guy reaction instead of just two or three. But it depends on what they do with them from here because everybody's still interesting. And I think AJ, again, you know, becoming a heel will probably help him because there's no way as long as he's been there and just with, honestly, with AJ's promo, mm, he's not going to be hotter than LA Knight right now or Orton right now or Cody right now or even Owens right now. So as a heel, his in-ring is more important and what he can do. But anyway, to answer your question, that's, I think they've just got a lot more people hot and they can spread them out. And Punk, we didn't even mention Punk. They can spread them out over three hours of Raw and two hours of SmackDown and the once a month pay-per-view. And AEW just... <laughs> I laugh every time I hear people say, well, they've got so much talent, they can't push them. No, they got so many guys. They don't have enough talent. They do not have nearly this many main event guys, much less healthy main event guys. And that's in Tony's disjointed shit. It doesn't make enough sense to keep, they're keeping here on SmackDown and Raw all of these people and Seth Rollins until his injury, and Cody, who wasn't even on this program, and Punk, they're keeping them all interconnected in a way that they've got multiple matchups because of the jealous... Drew! I'm talking about Drew. The jealousy and the backstories and the history between these guys when one was a heel, one was babyface, now it's switched, or just both of them are on the same side, but they want the same thing. They've got multiple 
intriguing matchups where AEW has almost none that are going to draw any money, just that the basement fans are going to mark out about. So I don't think they're in a, a problem right now in the WWE with anybody cooling off. I, I, I think it's just it's more of a dogfight for these guys to stay where they are. And that's what's probably prodding them to do a better job uh, and, and cut more pointed promos. Oh, but anyway, you know, it's, it's uh, right now. Uh, the, the AEW is a bowl of fucking mixed nuts and WWE is a box of fluffy ducks. Don't you think Brian? Uh, that wasn't what I was thinking as a comparison. No, you wouldn't think of that. Well, it's just smooth sailing for the WWE. They're they're and they're farting through silk. They're in tall cotton. They're a box of fluffy ducks. And over across the street, it's it's not so good. It's it's rough. It's a hard row to hoe. That was a favorite expression of Piper, wasn't it? A box of fluffy ducks. Well, that's it's it's WWF centric. It comes from the Bruce and Pat and Vince inner circle. Ah, no problem. Box of fluffy ducks. But anyway, if you would like a sounds box, like a lot of shit. I mean, that doesn't sound like a good thing. It sounds like a box full of shit. Well, if you would like a box that doesn't contain shit or fluffy ducks, but contains something that you would like and be interested in and pay a fraction of its proper premium price for, then you need to sign up with our friends over at Bespoke Post at BoxOfAwesome.com. Because everybody knows that anything that comes out of a box is over. Brian, we've established that on numerous occasions, haven't we? You've claimed that on numerous occasions. I think it's still, you know, something that has to be tested over time. It's been adjudicated in a court of law, and I've got papers to prove it. Anything that comes out of a box of awesome is going to be over with you, because what you do is you go to boxofawesome.com, and you take the quiz, and you... You tell them the things you're interested in because they have tons of different categories. They just go down the streets and those markets across the world, New York, Bombay, London, Tokyo, Paris, Munich, everybody's loving pop music, and they pick up all of these incredible items from these mom-and-pop small businesses that you might never have heard of. Here in and the States. They, well, anywhere, but especially in the States. <laughs> Especially here. That's especially exclusively especially here. Especially yes. exclusively <laughs> here. And and, and they're, they're over in Des Moines, too. And they get all this stuff. They put it in a freight car. They, they take it to their headquarters, and they put it in boxes. And then when you sign up for the Box of Awesome, they send you the Box of Awesomeness that contains the product or products that you, frankly, have told them that you were interested in the genre of same. It's simple. And besides that, you're supporting the small businesses because if their stuff gets complaints, if the if if the customers of boxofawesome.com, if they get complaints about something that they're sending out to people, well, they go back to that mom and pop and they grab mom by the scruff of the neck and they make her watch while they Here slap pop again. around. No, they don't. They don't do any of that, ladies and gentlemen. That is metaphorically they take incorrect care of their also customers. because they're not going to in any way do that they're going to work with mom and pop if there was indeed a mom and pop to be worked with well and ev everybody's got a mom and a pop <laughs> well i don't know if they're running the business well if, if they're it could not be pop and business, pop it could no be pop wonder and pop. if mom and pop aren't running the business no wonder the kids are in such bad shape these days but the point is is that they're not going to let people cheat their customers if your stuff is not awesome when it comes out of that box, there's going to be hell to pay for whoever put it in there, I'll tell you that, and whoever made it. And there's there's a paper trail, and by, they can track these people down. So if you're one of Box of Awesome suppliers, don't try to cut corners. But folks, <laughs> But if you right wanted now, to, there'd be wonderful knives in your Box of Awesome that cut those corners. That's, that's another thing. There's knives in these boxes, and a motherfucker might get cut. I'll tell you what, when you become a member, you're going to have access to stellar discounts across a plethora of products, 30% off or more sometimes from what you would pay if somebody pulled a knife on you individually. And like we said, you're supporting the small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome 
is from mom and pop or pop and pop. We're not sure of their proclivities or personal relationships, but they- Ma they and make, her special friend. Pa, Ma and her special friend, they make darn good Framistats. And it's free to sign up at Box of Awesome and you can skip a month or cancel any time. And right now, I'm talking immediately, you can get a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code JCE at checkout. These, these codes are getting pretty uniform. So just remember the initials of this program. You can't go wrong. Boxofawesome.com, the code JCE. You're going to get a free mystery gift, all re free along with the the monthly shipment that you're going to pay a seduced rate for, uh, much less than it's normally charged or cost in, in anywhere in the world. So you're just you're getting shit just just given to just handed to you for no reason at boxofawesome.com well, for the code reason KCE. that you've subscribed to box of awesome and you're willing to receive wonderful well but yeah cool. what have you done for them that you should get that much money off and a, a, a free mystery gift well that's not about what you do for them it's about what they can do for you they're wonderful people at the box of awesome well ask not what your box of awesome can do for you ask what you can do for your box of awesome all right, well, between now and the end of the decade, I plan to put a man on this box of awesome. Not because it is easy, but because it is hard. But it's easy to sign up. It's just hard to get out of this shit. Boxofawesome.com. <laughs> Promo code JCE. You'll never, it's like a roach motel. You'll never get out. You're talking about this show, for the record. That's, that's the one I'm talking about. This program right here. Well, Brian, speaking of awesomeness, what in the world is going on over there at the Arcadian Vanguard Network and the Wrestling News this week? Oh, you know, the usual. Well, that's, I hit the wrong button. Well, that was, uh, <laughs> this, oh, that's the wrong one, too. That's the Mike Lano button. Uh, actually, all these are kind of insults now that I look at it. Yeah, that didn't work. All right, well, yeah, another Oh Yeah week on the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network. Get information about all the shows on Twitter at Super Podcast or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arcadian Vanguard. Speaking of Oh Yeah or Ooh Yeah, here, Brian Solomon on Shut Up and Wrestle. Just talk with John Finkel, the author of the upcoming Macho Man Randy Savage biography. Hear that today at suawpod.com are available wherever you find your favorite podcast. And of course, thank you to Brian Solomon for filling in for me last week. Also want to make mention of the latest episode of Stick to Wrestling with John McAdam, John's guest, Bob Smith from PWI, or the old days of PWI. Here's some fun magazine talk. McAdamPod.com, or look for Shut Up and Wrestle with John McAdam, wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Of course, the wrestling news. Each and every day, Get your wrestling news for free. Every morning, get your wrestling newscast from The Wrestling News. Get it at thewrestlingnews.com or look for Arcadian Vanguard's The Wrestling News, wherever you find your favorite podcast. And of course, on the Arcadian... What's the title of that again? On the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube channel, you can find The Wrestling News. And don't forget about the 605 Super Podcast, The Mothership! Hey, lady, go through the archive today at 605pod.com, available wherever you find your favorite podcasts, The Mothership. The Mother. I'm at capacity. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my, my cup is running over at this point. Um, Would be the key learnings here. <laughs> I'm going to take your batteries away. I had to buy new batteries. You know, well, they shouldn't have sold them to you. You should have had to have your parents' permission before you bought those batteries, kid. They would have never allowed me to get any of these. Uh, it's over 18 only. Oh, good heavens. Boy, they now get longer one. and longer every time I press it. Yes, it certainly does. I think you need to see some kind of doctor about that. Dr. Proctor. Nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs>